This morning's message is actually a script that I put together for Good Friday services at a former church I served. But it's okay. It wasn't much acting. It was more just posing in line with the words. The words are what speak loudest. Here we are today. We've gone from Hosanna to crucify him. On that first day, the 10th day of that month where the Passover lamb was chosen and the people waved their palm branches. You got one. Go ahead. Wave it. Say Hosanna. Yeah. Lord, save us. That is what happened on that first, what we call Palm Sunday. I'm going to talk about that in a minute, too. And then there was the next day when Jesus went to the temple and he cleansed it because Hosanna was actually the word of choosing him as the Passover lamb. Lord, save us. Just as the blood of the Passover lamb saved the Hebrews from the death angel as they were about to be released from Egypt, Lord, let the blood that you are about to shed save us from the bondage of sin and death that contains us every day. And so, in keeping with the custom of taking the yeast out of the home for Passover, Jesus went into the house of his father and he took out the yeast of sin, the blatant abuses of the holiness of God's temple that were going on in this place. And he reminded us, he forewarned us that we, like Eve, are to come into this temple, the body in which we reside, and let him cleanse our sin over and over again. Because we have this way of never stopping the sin. So he does, one by one. And then there was that next day, the day when he was a little bit of all over the place, just talking friend of mine would say, just talking about what he was talking about. And in the process of what he said, he angered every possible hypocrite he could find and challenged those who said that they loved him to start living for him. His words so incensed Judas, who really just wanted to rule in an earthly kingdom, that he went to the Pharisees and Sadducees who really just wanted to rule in this world. And together they conspired that Judas would turn Jesus over for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a common slave. And then the next day, they sat, they reclined, actually, at the Passover table with the matzah, a reminder of the haste with which they fled the oppressors in Egypt, a challenge for us of the haste with which we must fled the sin that must flee, the sin that holds us back. And with the marah, the bitter herbs, 
that we might never get confused and forget that those good old days when we walked in sin were not good old days at all. They were bitter days. They were miserable days. And the four cups of the fruit of the vine, the cup of sanctification, the promise that Jesus will set us apart and use us for his purpose. That's the cup they drank to start the meal. And then there was the second cup, the cup of the wrath of God that symbolizes his deliverance from the penalty of our sin and shame, a cup we don't even have to drink from. And then there's that third cup, the cup of redemption, reminding us that it doesn't matter what we've been or what we've done or where we were or who we were with or how ashamed we are of what used to be. He changes our shame and uses it for his glory. And all that fourth cup, the cup of the promise that he's coming back. He's coming back, y'all. This crazy world in which we are dwelling is not the world that will last for all of eternity. He's coming back. <laughs> and then knowing that when he left that room, Judas was all set to turn him over to, the, to those who would kill him. Jesus did what he knew Judas knew he would do. And he went to that garden where he prayed and where he submitted quite voluntarily. No one captured him. You don't capture the king of kings and lord of lords. You just hope he'll go quietly. Ah, glory. And he did. Because he knew that in going quietly, he was going to this day. Now, let's talk about this day. We say we just went from Sunday to Friday. And that on Friday, Jesus was crucified. And we say it was a Friday because there's a reference that they had to take him down before the Sabbath. So we're assuming that the next day was Saturday, which is the Jewish Sabbath. But we are forgetting that the next day was Passover. And Passover is also a Sabbath, a day where the, the schedule changes and it's focused on worship and rest and celebrating who God is. And so the truth of the matter, and we will never get a change, so I'm not going to start the battle now, but just the information, so we know. What did Jesus say when he told the people, he said, tear down this temple, and in how many days he would build it up again? Three. Jesus said, just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, even so the Son of Man will be in the in the bowels of the earth for three days and three nights. And so if we come to the resurrection story, which we'll actually do that on resurrection day this year, yay. Um, but when we come to the resurrection story, we will see that it was on the first day of the week that Mary and the other Mary and Salome came to the tomb and found it empty. We have to start there, and we have to go back three days. One Saturday, that's one. One Friday, that would be two. It's either, since Jewish people do sun up days, it's either Thursday, which would mean he was only in the grave part of Thursday, not three full days, or it's Wednesday. Don't get lost in that. But don't feel threatened by that when somebody comes up to you and say, y'all are celebrating stuff on the wrong day. Yeah, we are, okay. But it's not really the day. It's the deed. 
it's the deed. So today I come to you to talk about that day. <laughs> the day when the people said crucify him. I remember that, uh, that first time that the church I grew up in observed the seven last words of Jesus. Well, the first time I was aware that they did it. They probably had been doing it for years. And my sister and her friend and I, we were standing there trying to figure out what the seven words were. You know, Father, forgive them for they know not, 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 I got two more words. That, that can be it. What were those seven words? And then we went to the event where we heard in preaching and we heard in beautiful singing the seven last sayings of Christ on the cross. He had seven sentences, seven statements. So I'm reading, what I'm reading to you is actually a compilation of scriptures from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that tell the story. I encourage you to join me in visualizing what the scriptures so beautifully describe for us. I, it, it, I ask you to hear the words of all the speakers. I ask you to feel the feelings that are going on in that moment, but I ask you most of all to hear Jesus and what he said in the midst of what he did when he died for us that day. So we begin, here's the word of the Lord, and it all is today. Then the whole assembly rose and led him, Jesus, off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, we have found this man subverting our nation. He opposed payment of taxes to Caesar. He claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? You've said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they are insistent. He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about Jesus, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. They dressed him in an elegant robe and sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us, as you can see. He has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. But the whole crowd shouted, away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! See, Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Want 
wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! But the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that Jesus be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their request. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked and surrender Jesus to their will. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wounds that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with Jesus to be executed. And when they came to the place of the skull, they crucified him there, along with those criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares one for each of them with the undergarment remaining. And this garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Well, let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened, that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. And the people stood watching. The rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened it to the cross. 
It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but write that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he asked, since you are under the same sentence? You and I, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man, he has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. And near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. From noon, until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli! He breathed his last. 
the centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells you the truth and he testifies so you also may believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. But all those who knew him, including the women who followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Were you there when they crucified? My Lord, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh,
for you. For you. For you. Oh, for you. And for me. Let us stand as we prepare to leave, singing, alas, and did my Savior die in 1994? crucify my heart of selfishness and raise up a heart full of his love. As we go, the words of benediction, his promise from God to you, his offer from God to you, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and you and give you his precious peace. Both now henceforth and even forevermore and all of God's children said a resounding Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah.